my channel and if you are new, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about the time that I was a Disney princess. So I first did want to clarify that I did not work for Disneyland or Disney World, um, but I did work for a small company here where I live. Um, and basically what we did was we provided a birthday party character um, or for an event, things of that nature. It was so much fun. Obviously, the number one question is who did I get to play? Um, there were actually a lot of Disney characters, um, just because I guess I had that Disney face, um, or whatever you call it. Um, and so basically, I got to hang out with um, Alice in Wonderland, I got to hang out with Rapunzel, I got to hang out with Princess Sophia the First, which is a newer princess if you haven't heard of her. Um, I also got to hang out with Ariel, uh, and I also got to do just a normal mermaid, um, which was a lot of fun. I also, probably my number one favorite hands down was Tinkerbell, um, and besides that, I think that is pretty much it. So another really highly asked question is how I got this job. Um, so basically there's probably a whole bunch of companies that do it where you live. Um, so it's definitely not out of the picture for you. Um, I just would look up Disney characters, um, things like that. How I got this job was my friend, um, she actually worked as, um, or she got to hang out with a lot of princesses. And so she posted about it very frequently um, and I was like hey girl I want to do that too so I messaged her asked her you know what fairy godparent I need to talk to um, and she basically gave me the whole lowdown I'm so thankful for that um, because without her I definitely wouldn't have got to experience this um, which I think is very <laughs> unique and awesome um, and so basically she gave me a whole lowdown like literally sent me like five paragraphs of how to get this job um, where to apply who to talk to like everything guys like everything it was amazing um, and so I basically did just that um, and I sent out my application so in my application I had a headshot um, and I also had an application uh, a lot of people are not an application a resume I mean a lot of people are like well I never Disney princess before so what do I put on my resume you literally just have to think outside of the box uh, for me for example I was a party host I worked a lot with kids obviously being a Disney princess you're going to be able to hang out with a lot of kids um, so what I did was I you know included that into my resume I also included that I had a theater background um, I also include that I had a musical background things like that because obviously you're going to be using all of those elements to be a Disney princess and then it turns out um, the owner she actually got into a car accident whenever I sent this out so she didn't reply to me um, for a few weeks so I was sure that I didn't get it um, I was super upset and so so I was like, oh man, that really sucks, you know. Um, and then weeks later, it was like a freaking Christmas present miracle. Um, she messaged me back and was like, hey, like, you know, we're going to do auditions, yada, yada, yada. Are you still interested? And I was like, hell to the yes, I'm still interested. Like, who isn't interested in being a Disney princess? Um, so yeah, um, I basically went out and I auditioned. There were two other girls that were auditioning with me, and we actually all three got the part, so that was awesome. We all all three out, I think, or no, we didn't all try out for a different princess. Um, two of us have, uh, tried out for Elsa, and then I think one tried out for Ariel. Um, I'm not too sure. I don't really remember because it was definitely over a year ago. Um, but, um, yeah, so I tried out for Elsa, which is really funny because a lot of you actually message or comment on my videos that I look like Elsa and that I must have played her and yada yada yada, which is funny because I didn't play Elsa, and I'll get more into it why. Um, but yeah, so I did try out as Elsa. Um, basically, the interview process was, you know, fairly easy and fun. Um, instead of asking questions like, why do you want to work here? And, you know, what what are your strengths and stuff like that, like a typical interview, um, they asked a lot of Disney questions. Um, they asked basically, it was more so, um, they gave us a scenario of like, you know, if a kid asked you this, this, and this, how would you reply? And things like that. Um, so that really consumed a lot of the interview. Interview. Another part was just talking about yourself, seeing how outgoing you are, um, and then of course we had to sing. 
Uh, so I sung Let It Go by Elsa, um, and it was a lot of fun. I was so nervous though. I seriously was like shaking. Um, and then the other girl as well, she, um, I don't know if she sung Let It Go. I think she did, but it was like a different part. <laughs> By the way, my son is in here, so you could definitely hear him. He's over there playing. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I think we both sung Let It Go, and we just both did like different like parts of it um, and it was just super nerve-wracking but we both did it um, and yeah so after that I think it was the next day that she reached out to us because we all um, ended up I think texting or something like that so we all knew um, do we get our phone numbers after? I don't remember, but I remember we all knew. Um, but yeah, so basically she reached out to us, told us that, you know, we all got it and that our first gig was like ASAP. It was seriously like, I think two days after or something like that. So there was like no room for preparation. Um, I actually got to hang out with Rapunzel. That was the very first princess that I ever got to do. Um, and I believe the other girls got Cinderella and I think the other girl played like an assistant uh, for her first time. And so yeah, it was a lot of fun. We got to meet, um, well basically we got to do a volunteer event um, because we did a lot of those and we basically got to meet a lot of kids and let me tell you guys, it was seriously the most fun I've ever had. So I think something I most definitely did not take into consideration is how much preparation it takes to get all princess fied. It takes a long time. Um, it probably took me, oh man, are you going ham over there, Grayson? <laughs> it probably took me four or five hours just to get ready, um, and that's including everything. So that's doing makeup, which probably took me two hours to do, um, because when I tell you guys you have to look right down to the eyebrow of that princess, you have to look right down to the eyebrow of that princess. It's not your everyday makeup look, it is full blown. Um, so we're talking setting spray, we're talking setting powder too. Um, we want the whole shebang, we want those fake eyelashes, everything. Um, so it does take a long time. It's like getting ready for prom every day. Um, so. Um, outside of that, there also is, of course, wigs. So we did wig caps, um, and basically, before the wig, wig cap, you have to do pin rolls. Um, so that's where you take your individual hair, roll it up, um, and bobby pin the crap out of it. And guys, when I tell you bobby pins are your best friend, they are your BFF for life, um, because it is so important that your hair, obviously, stays up and away from your face and in that wig. Um, so you bobby pin the crap out of your hair. So me, for example, um, I have thin hair, so it is easier to work with. However, I have a lot of it. So those pin girls, I probably had maybe like, I wanna say like 40 in my hair. I may be exaggerating. Um, but yeah, by the way, sorry for all the noise in the background. He's playing with his toys right now. Um, and he's trying to be the loudest possible, of course, because I'm doing a video. <laughs> and then something that not everybody had to deal with, but I did particularly, were tattoos and covering them up. So Disney, unfortunately, hasn't made a badass princess yet, uh, like a rebel princess or anything like that. So I did have to cover up my tattoos, and it was a process. I didn't um, have Kat Von D's like tattoo cover up, or I know there's like another one out there that like covers them really well. Um, so what I did was I had to use YouTube, my trusty pal, um, and basically look up how to cover these black things all over my body. Um, so what I would do was I use pink powder, um, or pink eyeshadow, my bad, um, because I, my skin is more of a pinky tone than a yellow tone, um, or orange tone, or anything like that. So I use pink, um, and basically I would do the eyeshadow, put that over, you would hairspray it, and then you would put foundation over that, and then you would do it again. So you would hairspray it, then you would take pink foundation, or pink, pink foundation, oh my god. Take pink, uh, what is it called, eyeshadow, put that on, and you know, basically repeat those steps until it is gone, and then you fix it with some concealer, um, and then of course setting spray, and if you are mermaiding, you would do, um, what is it called? I used to remember, um, cause I used it a lot, but it's like aqua proof, or something like that, and basically it's a waterproof, makeup cover up, um, you know, that way, go in the water. Um, but yeah, so 
that definitely was a process that alone probably took an hour because I think at the time I had five or six tattoos um, and so they were like more small especially the one on um, the one on my rib cage never really was shown as much so I didn't necessarily have to you know obviously cover it because it's covered by a dress unless I was mermaiding and then of course you have the dress so it's not just wearing a dress and boom you're done you have to wear basically um, what we did was we had to wear a corset um, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly I know it's like a corset or I call it a corset and I get made fun of but that's just how I that's what I grew up knowing it as so it's corset in my book um, but yeah so you have to wear a corset you have to wear a nude bra it has to be strapless um, and then you have to wear uh, like spanks so you have to wear um, like nude shorts basically under um, so that way it gives you that Barbie look in case any kids you know try to peek a boo, um, you are all covered. Um, and so that's basically like the underwear and then you wear, um, man, what is it called? A, hmm, I can't think of what it's called right now, guys. I'm having like a major blank. Um, but basically, um, where it makes the dress poofy, it's like a skirt, a ball skirt. Is that what it's called? I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but basically, um, it makes your dress all poofy if you have a poofy dress. So like Princess Sophia the first, she had a poofy dress. So, you know, you would wear uh, that bell skirt. That's what we're calling it for right now. I really don't know what it's called right now. Um, and so that would go under it and then whatever like under slips or anything. And then the huge, heavy freaking dress, guys. Oh my God. Those dresses are so heavy. Um, but in the end, you feel like a princess, and of course you look like one, that's the goal. One thing that is super important in being a Disney princess is studying for your character. Um, you have to be prepared for any and all questions. Uh, for example, Tinkerbell, why can you not fly right now? I see you have wings, but why can't you use them? Um, that's a very common one for Tink. Um, or for Rapunzel, a very big common one, which I didn't even think of, but we have like a whole book of them um, just to like study and practice. Uh, Rapunzel, why is your hair long now when in the end of the movie you cut it all off? Um, and that's like a really big one. I tell you guys, you get asked that like two or three times um, while you are at an event if it's a pretty big one. And what I always use for that is that I went somewhere down the line that Flynn found me another magical flower. I put it in my hair and it grew all beautifully again um, and things like that. You really can come up with whatever story. It just has to go along your princess's background, of course, that that would only make sense. <laughs> there are, of course, those harder kids or even sometimes parents um, that try and break you and claim that you aren't real but you always have to remember like nope I am here I am real I don't know what much to tell you um, always keep the magic alive that is number one priority um, so you really just have to redirect them um, you know you, you can't get out of character that is seriously the biggest no-no you cannot get out of character uh, so basically just reply however a princess would reply another thing that I don't think people take into account which I talked a little bit about earlier of why I wasn't Elsa and that is because I am way too short um, this is something I most definitely didn't think of beforehand um, but I am only five foot two uh, Elsa is a taller queen um, and Aurora is like a taller princess so I would never play her either um, things like that so that's why if you notice I either play very young princesses like Princess Sophia or obviously small characters like Tinkerbell um, yes there is a thing called heels um, and I know that was like the number one thing they're like well you can wear heels um, well not the owner or anything would tell me that but like my friends would be like why can't you just wear heels because it's not that easy um, we already wear heels and I'm still not tall enough um, like I'm telling you Elsa is tall tall Aurora is tall tall so even with heels even even stilettos I would not qualify um, you know for that height to be that queen or princess I think one of my favorite things about my time of hanging out with all those princesses was definitely when we did make a wish um, there is seriously no greater feeling a lot of you guys know my uncle um, did have brain cancer and so he unfortunately passed from that and he was really like a father to me um, and so being able getting the opportunity to hang out with these kids that are going through the same battle or even something similar even just a struggle alone is seriously 
honestly so gratifying. Um, there's nothing that makes my heart w more warm. Um, I knew my uncle was with me the entire time, um, and I just, I'll never take back those moments. There was one girl um, at Make-A-Wish, and she basically requested um, to have dinner with her favorite princess, which was Rapunzel, and um, so I got to go down and hang out with her, and I think my best memory in Make-A-Wish um, of all time was she gave me a best friend bracelet, and I still have that to this day, um, and I hope she still has hers because we definitely, her and Rapunzel, are best friends for life. A lot of other Make-A-Wish opportunities, which we got to do, um, were basically present to these kids, you know, that have gone through hell and back, uh, that they get to go to Disneyland or Disney World, um, you know, the happiest place ever, um, and they really just get to be happy. Uh, so that is, you know, what else we got to do with Make-A-Wish, and it was it was really awesome. So yeah, besides all of this, I really can't think of much more to add. So I am going to be doing a Q&A, so that way you guys could ask me questions. Seriously, ask me any Anything, as long as it doesn't ruin the magic or anything like that, um, I will be, you know, more than happy to answer. So I am going to be doing a Q&A. So leave all your questions right down below, um, and I will get on that video as soon as possible. But besides that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, um, and I hope you like, subscribe this video, um, and yeah, have a great one, guys. Bye.